Hi, it's me again, Michiel, and... Do you know my name? Do I? <laughs> Brain, of course! Yay! <laughs> I prepared something uh, to talk about today. We've been uh, talking a lot about what it's like to be gay here in the Netherlands and stuff like that. Brain was kind of curious how historically uh, we got to the place where we are today. The Netherlands seem like a very accepting country uh, for different sexualities. Uh, Most certainly. And I did some research, or well, not, not me actually, my boyfriend did, Roy, you've seen him. Uh, Roy did uh, some research about um, our developments in gay rights. So I'll be telling you something about that today. I'm super excited to learn more about that. The first, well, n n uh, no worthy moment was actually 1971. It's about Article 248. So um, it's a government legislative thing. Exactly. Ah, okay. Thing was, back then, having sex with someone um, of the same gender wasn't allowed till you're 20. How would they know that? Very good question. I wouldn't know. But <laughs> in at least this is what it says in the law. To clarify this, since the French Revolution, heterosexual uh, couples uh, from starting about age 16 were allowed to do whatever they wanted with each other. But people of the same sex weren't. And then in 1911, you had, uh, well, the then Prime Minister, and um, he... Um, Changed the law a little bit to say uh, from starting of age 20 you are allowed to have same sex sex it's super aggressive yeah but, but the thing is the reason why the prime minister decided this was he wanted to prevent sodomy he was mm -hmm. like I, I want to protect the children so say starting from 20 you are allowed to have sex with people from the same gender but below that to protect our children from some sodomy we won't allow it. But then, uh, starting from 1969, <laughs> <69. yes. laughs> they uh, started protesting uh, against that. And then in 1971, it got, uh, well, the same for uh, straight people. Y you were allowed to have sex with people from the same gender starting from age 16. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad that that passed, but I guess as long as you didn't tell anybody you were doing it, but you I could mean, get away with it. Uh, do you know what the penalty was for such an act? I did not look that up, but uh, I think you could either get a huge fine or get thrown into jail or something like that. Just like, being like a ra rapist, you know? Well, if you know, let us know in the comments below what the penalty was for that. Wow. I'm sorry, I, I know that there's laws like that in America, which I think is insane. There's still marriage laws in some states that state that it's illegal to be married to the same sex. Yeah. Even though the federal system has already agreed that everybody has the right to be married. But some states are just so anti it that they keep these laws on their books. This is going to be a celebratory thing. 1977. 1977, I'm saying it right? Yeah, 1977. It sounds so weird. 1977. In Dutch it would be 1977, but... And that sounds better? No, but it just sounds more natural to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, what happened then? Uh, Pink yeah. Saturday. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but... Uh, I've heard of, like, Purple... Purple Friday. Yeah, Purple Friday. And that's, like, at the end of the year, I think? usually something that's used by stuff like gay straight alliance and it's just acceptance of being gay mm -hmm. pink saturday was uh, something well i think it started in amsterdam uh, it was uh, for acceptance etc so it was just for showing hey it's okay to be gay and we uh, don't want other people to think weird about it because well we're just the same as everybody else so it was actually fighting for your rights mm -hmm. uh, so it was very basic so it's fa something very different from the gay pride sorry i want to better understand pink saturday so when is pink saturday june 25th uh, 1977 uh, in 1977 um well it really it was the first time that, that gay people in the netherlands were confident enough to like look we're here we don't want to hide anymore we're normal just like all of you and 
I, we want you to accept us. People would c uh, come together, maybe even on, on the streets or whatever, and just sort of fight for our rights. Every Same. year is about fighting for rights, but they don't do that anymore? No, nowadays it's more like whenever it's Pink Saturday again, um, it's a moment to think about being gay and that it's normal, that's accepted. You see it the most in uh, high schools actually. You have stuff like the Gay Straight Alliance, wasn't invented in the Netherlands, but it is celebrated in the Netherlands, that's a good thing. Uh, Gay Straight Alliances in high school, where people uh, they try to raise awareness on high school that it's normal to be gay. And uh, what better day to celebrate it on Pink Saturday. It's on a Saturday though, and people don't have school. No, so they kind of also do it on Purple Friday. <sighs> but they also always try to mention Pink Saturday in June. The Gay Pride is the first thing um, in any country, because there have been Gay Prides in other countries, but the meaning in the Netherlands was different, because they wanted to really celebrate. It wasn't about preaching, it, wa it wasn't about, hey, look at us, we're normal or whatever, no. It was just for one simple reason, come party with us, we're gay and we're fun and we want to celebrate this. It sounds a little bit kind of like what they do in San Francisco. <laughs> yes, but the difference is, we had Pink Saturday specifically for acceptance and the gay pride for celebrating and in other countries um, it's, it it's, it's a bit both but the first time it, ha it happened in the Netherlands was 1996 Pride in America well, I think it's been around a lot longer than 1996 I think it would be cool to find out more and maybe one of my viewers would know is if somebody from the Netherlands went to America and took our gay pride celebration thing and thought oh this is really cool I'd like to see this in America like sorry in the Netherlands and brought it here because so many things America has brought over from the Netherlands that'd be cool to find that out yeah so if you know please tell us <laughs> that would be interesting to compare these things and also look at it a bit further than just the Netherlands but um, we have to have a starting point yes yes okay so now we've covered Pride, and when is Pride here? It's usually in the summer. Um, usually, if I'm not mistaken, it's on the 3rd of August. Please don't attack me or anything, but I've never celebrated the Pride. I have my favorite festival, it's a fancy festival, which is always on the same date. And, well, when I was younger, I kind of wanted to go, but I was like, oh, I'm scared to go alone. And then I had these amazing festivals. First I went to Budapest to Siget and then to Castlefest. It was always on the same time. Mm -hmm. So I really have to sacrifice one of these great festivals to actually go to the Pride. But I will do it one day. You have Pride every day, so is it really important? I mean, it is important to celebrate, but it's but feeling bad about it when you show your Pride every day, I think is more important than showing your Pride once a year. And the most important thing is that you accept people for who they are, even if you don't like it, that's alright. Mm -hmm. Just don't go screaming in their faces that you don't like what they are, because they won't do that to you either. I mean, th that's the most important thing. Yes, very, very true. In 1998, so almost before the change of the century, mm -hmm. uh, the legalization of same-sex partnership, which we weren't the first with. Uh, it's uh, actually been done earlier in other countries, but this mm -hmm. was the first time uh, that happened in the Netherlands. And then two years later, in December 2000, Finally, we were the first of the entire world to legalize same-sex marriage. Well, there was some opposition in uh, 2000 in December when we wanted to pass this bill for same-sex marriage. And, uh, well, the only opposition we had, and there was one third uh, out of the government, was the Christian Democratic Party. But because they were just one third, we still managed to pass the bill. And that's how we got where we were today. That's really, really good that uh, two-thirds were still for it. Partnership also uh, allows you to have the same rights and, uh, as hetero couples and you could divorce and stuff like that. And that already happened a lot in other countries. But marriage, which, well, 
you want to be able to use the same term, no matter what your gender is and who you like. I think it's weird though that marriage and partnership are are the same right legally, but different names. Well, the, f the main difference is marriage is as. Uh, is also something religious and um, you you be connected in holy matrimony if I say it correctly and partnership is just partnership there's no religion attached to it anywhere and okay nowadays we don't see marriage necessarily as a religious thing mm -hmm. but, but it's, that's where it stems from exactly and that's why it took a lot longer did you understand that there are couples that are Christian or Catholic or whatever and they want to be married yeah and I totally get that that term is important to some people and marriage is also something you get uh, brought up with that the, the fairy tale idea that you can have this huge wedding where all your friends and family will come that makes it a very big momentous occasion if, in your life if you, you're used to that idea and if you think that's important. Do you think that there's more milestones that uh, the Netherlands needs to to do for the LGBTQ, not just the gay community? Well, this is a bit harder for myself because it doesn't really apply to me, but I do have some friends who aren't necessarily gay, aren't necessarily straight, aren't necessarily bisexual, but might be feeling different in their skin, or uh, might just feel like a woman on one day and a man on another or whatever. So just and I do yeah. have a feeling that they would also like to be more expressively, uh, well, have their voice heard. Maybe in a way of a special holiday or whatever. Something that I've been noticing recently um, in the Netherlands, and recently could be the last 10 years or so, is that um, we used to be more uh, accepting of gay rights, um, also like all the people that are living here, in the way they treat gay people. Uh, like especially during the 70s but um, now that we've also got a, a lot of new people from all over the world who started living here and have become just as much Dutch as I am <laughs> um, think about it kind of differently because they were raised from a different culture and that also changes the skills a bit in how accepting they are of being gay or different in any other way that's true do you think people are converting to being more accepting or do you think they are causing other people to bring on their belief um, of discriminating? Well, as I was saying, this is a process over the past 10 years and in the beginning it got worse. But I'm getting a feeling that slowly but surely we're going towards better again. Because, well, if you're like a third generation, but still 100% Dutch because you were born and raised here, etc. And you know the culture. The further of a distance there is in between, the more freedom it gives you to uh, find a balance in what you've learned from your own culture, what you've learned from uh, the Dutch culture, and then what you decide to think is important. And I like that. Me too. Yeah, and I think that if we look at the age of people who are more accepting and less accepting, it were my parents that told me to be extra careful because they've had their experiences when they were young. They, even by a stepdad who wasn't gay at all, got beaten up for being gay because apparently he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. And mm -hmm. I think there might still be people who are still have a bit of an older mindset who might still not be as accepting, but. The youth of today, I have high hopes. Well, I do appreciate you watching. Please share in the comments below what you think of all the hurdles that the gay movement and LGBTQ movements have overcome. And until next time, ring that bell and look for my videos. <laughs> no. <laughs> what bell? There's a bell on YouTube, so if you subscribe, there's a bell that will alert you to new videos. Wow! I didn't even know that. Um, but yeah, ring that bell and subscribe if you regularly watch and stay happy and healthy. Bye! Bye.